Right. We've been talking about, uh, in fact, our, our theme this year is uh, unity. And um, there's so many different ways we can talk about it and so many different ways that we can address it. But we're talking about Bible unity. Bible unity. And I, one of the things that I think I started off talking about out of Matthew 25, where Jesus said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. I don't care if it's your house, a two people house, or if it's, it's the White House administrative staff, if it's, um, if it's, it's like he said, a kingdom cannot stand if it's divided. It doesn't matter. It is a spiritual law that anything, uh, the one or two, or 2,000, 200,000, if there's division in it, it's going to collapse. Amen. It's going to collapse. Amen. And I started talking about how, you know, at the church, a church, I don't know if you've ever been in a church split, a church division. It is a, that is a, that is, that is a, somebody let a demon from hell get in there. No, really, it, it's, it's amazing. But see, but that same demon, that's why 66%, 66% of uh, marriages end in divorce now. And I told you last week, I said, some of y'all sitting here right now, not even going to be together next year, if you, you, if you don't listen to me. Come on. Now, if you listen to him, you'll be together happily ever after. Amen. But if you don't listen to this, it's just because, see, unity is not something you just set it and forget it. Y'all remember that commercial? The, the rotisserie chicken? Yeah, the guy said you set it and forget it. And see, see so the name of this, it, of my message is achieving and maintaining unity. Because you can get it, but if you don't work at it, and we're going to read the scripture, if you don't work at it to maintain it, it'll get away from you. Because we live in a fallen world. We live in a negative world. We live in a world that is dominated by division and criticism and, and divisive and contempting, contempt, con, contemptuous people. Yeah, we live in a world like that. And so what happens is, what I'm afraid of, what I'm afraid of is that for so many people, that has become normal. There's a lot of kids that have grown up, probably not in this church, that, that have grown up in home where, where division was normal. It's just what you do. You get your last word. That's what you do. You say what you think. That's what you do. You give them a piece of your mind. That's what you do. It's what we do. It's normal. And so, and so they come into a, a, you know, scenarios like this, and they start learning, like, whoa, no, no division will eat your lunch and pop the bag. So it's nothing to play with. And so uh, we, Jesus talked about that. We talked about, oh, okay. See, I already know I'm going to get ready. So, so we haven't gone to the book of Acts yet, but one of the things in the book of Acts that was so pervasive all through the, the book was the word one accord. One accord, oneness, togetherness. And it's some phenomenal thing took place in that church. Uh, like families were restored, physical needs were met. Um, uh, Everybody had their needs met. You remember? Everybody. There was no lack. Can you imagine? Could you imagine a church where everybody was happy because they had their needs met? Can you imagine that? That's what happened in that church. I told you last week that if we start doing what the Bible said, people will call us a cult. Amen. Because they even sold property. They're, okay, Minister Jim doesn't have a, 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 a car. So people were selling their property, got the cash, and brought it to the church, and then they gave Minister Jim enough to go buy a car. Amen. What would happen? We couldn't get, we, we have to rent to Sullivan Arena. If, <laughs> well, go down there, you get a car, you go down there. <laughs> you know, folks, we come from everywhere. But, but, but that's, what, that's what that Bible unity did. Yeah. Bible unity not only got false cards, Bible unity got a lady named Dorcas. Uh, she, was, she wasn't a preacher or nothing. She was just a hostess. Wow. Telling people, giving people tissues and stuff. But she died. And they're like, oh no, no, no this is our sister. And they, the church got together and did what? Pray. You know, prayer is still, is yes. still yes, prayer is still in the Bible. Yes, sir. And so, so they prayed, raised Dorcas up. Yeah, and she went back in the kitchen and started cooking. <laughs> people shadow with healing people. And then, then the officials of the city didn't like it. And so they started messing with them. But you know what happened? 
Boy, God shut that thing down. See, sometimes God will fight your battles. There's some battles you can't fight yourself. God said, "Don't I got them. I wish you would. I wish, I wish you would. God got you. All right. I'm not messy yet. I'm just, I'm just talking. Okay, I'm reviewing actually, but I better get going because I got so much I want to talk about. But, uh, but uh, then we talked about uh, uh, John 17 where Jesus prayed. And he said, by this the world will know. That, um, that I'm for real, that I've come. How? By the way you relate and treat one another, the way you love one another, the way you take care of one another, the way you relate to one another. And we're going to talk more about that. But then we went to Psalm 133, and he says how good and pleasant it is that when people walk together in unity. He said, God has commanded blessing there. Now, there's something there's a commanded blessing where there's unity. Again, whether it's in your marriage, in your house with the children, whether it's in the church, whether it's in the department at work, whether it's, it's in the, the uh, 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 assembly, whether it's in the government, whether it's in the White House. That God, there's something spiritual, powerful about unity. Amen. And so, and so he said, there's a commanded blessing. Where, where God commands blessing, there's no struggle. If I were you, I would do whatever I have to do to get into unity. I mean, if you're at work, listen, listen, cut all that noise out of folks that ain't going nowhere and ain't doing nothing. And you get into unity. You go to the boss man and say, you know, if you already know what you do, just do it. And keep your head down and keep working. Amen. I've seen unity function. You know, I, I, I played on a lot of, I played a lot of sports back in the D-Day. And, uh, and uh, for some reason, I always played on championship team. You know, I don't know what it was. <laughs> no, really, 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 really. But, and I played on some sorry team too. Not many, but uh, no, really, really, not many. <laughs> Y'all funny. I'm telling you the truth. But so team sport. But one thing I, I realized, I realized the power of unity in sport teams. You don't always have to be the most talented, but you have to be the most united. Come on. Amen. That's good. And I've seen that work. I think we've been in churches. We've been in churches where, where there was unity. Unlike anything you've seen, and we've seen the hand of God move, and, and just supernatural stuff starts happening. Yeah. Stuff that you can't explain start happening where there's unity. Yeah. There was a time in Lighthouse. <laughs> yeah, there was a time in this church when we had unity off the heezies. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and you know, we realized, you know, that's why. I don't say this. If I say this, I don't folks running out, and then I have to explain. But, uh, but, um, see, see, we, <laughs> okay, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 I mean, unexplainable things take place when there was unity. And the devil gets busy with his unity. Paul even wrote one time, he said, he said, he said, he said, I spent three years, day and night, talking to y'all about this. What, Paul? That there will be wolves rising up from among you yes. to divide and snatch away and divide. The devil can't handle he, because he's defenseless against unity, so he's going to attack it. And he's going to attack the people and, and get them thinking uh, more highly than they ought to think about themselves. And then thinking they can go do this and they can do that. And, and I don't need to listen to my, listen, Pastor, I know what Genesis is. No, I don't need you no more. No, I'm serious. And so that spirit comes in and divides. And the very ones that knew, didn't know much, now they can, they're trying to teach the teacher. All right, then. Thank you. So, so anyway, unity in the church. We're going to talk more about that too. And uh, unity in marriage. You know, see, a lot of y'all don't know this, but see, me and Deb, we, we, we caught each other on the rebound. This is our second marriage, both of our second marriage. We got married real young, dun young and dumb. I think I was 19. How old were you? You don't even want to talk about it, huh? <laughs> anyway, she was about 19 too. And, and both our marriages, mine, I think on paper, I think on paper, it was like a year and a half. But that joke was over by 90 days. 
it was, it was. And so, and I don't know, I ain't gonna talk no more about hers. <laughs> but anyway, but we both, and so, so she, I got, I was divorced for her. Anyway, so we caught each other on the rebound. So my point is this. I know what it's like to be married without unity, and I know what it's like to be married with unity. Cause now here we are, we've been together, we've been together, like we, we hooked up in 78, that's 40 years. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we hooked up in 78. And so we've been together, she's the only, she's the only woman I've known, I'm the only man she's known 40 years. Crazy. Now, now, here's my point. Here's my point though. And you, you heard, I'm not going to tell the whole story. This is just to abbreviate it. My point is, we, 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 we hooked up and became one. Even before we, because we didn't get saved for another four years, right? Two years. You're right. You're right. You're right. This is how you do it. You're right. <laughs> That's how you do that. Yeah. And so anyway, so yeah, two years later. But, but we, we got united. Right there, and it's been it's been it's been on every since. In 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 every area we got united. I mean, okay, okay, I don't want to talk about that. We're gonna do a family series though, and then we'll give y'all that. Okay, praise God. Now, okay, I want you to go with me to Ephesians chapter four. And I'm doing everything I can to. Uh, convince you that unity, man, unity really matters. It's, it's a big deal with God. It's a big deal with God. I've seen what unity can produce. I've seen what division can produce. And I don't know about you, man, but I want, I want, I want I'm, I'm, and God is showing me stuff now I really didn't even consider before, but um, yeah. So I want to encourage you Part of what I want to encourage you with is to respect and value unity. Don't play with it. Don't 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 neglect it. Now, how many of you want the hand of God on your life? Okay, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to flow in unity, and uh, he tells us how to do it. Now, um, yeah, thank you, Lord. Oh, we okay. I'm, not, I'm gonna skip that one. Okay, we talked about that. Um, Ephesians chapter 1. Now here's what I'm talking about. Bible unity. Here's what Bible unity is. It's a state of being one. Freedom from division. It's harmony. It's people coming together with someone else for a common goal. Now you already knew that, but, but that's, that's what it is. And uh, I don't know about you, man. I, I want... I want unity. I, I value unity. I don't tolerate. I don't tolerate division, strife. I, I, I don't tolerate at any level. I don't. I don't. I don't mm -mm, discord. I run from it. I don't have friends that 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 that, that come and dump a bunch of crap on me because they know I don't play that. Y'all know what that means. That's not spiritual talk, but that's talk right there. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't just let both. I, anyway, I, um, I, I have a I have a disdain for division, Amen. and so does God. And I'm gonna show you some things today, and you might you might get a little shocked, but it's good. Okay, now, Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to go back here. We, we talked about this, and this is going to jump in our point. Chapter 4, thank you. Who was that? Mr. Jim, that was you? That was you? That was you reminding me where I was supposed to go? <laughs> I love my brethren. Therefore, the... Uh, I, Paul, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you are called, with all lowliness. See, we're called to this. With all lowliness, that means humility. Gentleness, with long suffering, that's patient, bearing with one another. How? In love. In love. Okay, I don't want to say that. But. Verse 3 endeavoring, that means to work at it, that means to put some effort into it. 
to what? Keep. Now remember I talked about that last week. To keep the unity of the spirit. To, when you're trying to keep something, you're not trying to go find it. Right? When, you, when you're keeping something, you're not trying to locate it. So this is something I already have. We already have. If you're born again, now if you're not born again, listen up really good and you're going to want to get in on this before we're done. But for, for the Christian, when you're born again, the Holy Spirit connected us all together. And that's why he called the unity of the Spirit. The unity of the Spirit. We're one together. God sees us as one. When I hurt you, I just hurt it. My, I hurt myself. When I talked about you, I just talked about myself and Jesus. Because Jesus said, if you've done it to them, you've done it to me. Amen. That's how God sees us. Now, we see ourselves, well, I'm Baptist, I'm Catholic, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know what I am. But, but, but no, no, you're my brother and sister. If you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, that's who we are. I told you last week, there's over 33,000 denominations in, in, in the world, 200, in 238 countries. There's 33,000. 33,000. Now, I, I don't know. Does anybody know how many Baptists, different Baptists there are? There's a, there's a, there's a bunch. You got American Baptist, National Baptist, First Baptist, Second Baptist, uh, Missionary Baptist. It, you got a bunch of them. And they all got one little slant. Denominations are man-made. God never made them. <laughs> okay. But I, but I don't know. So he said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit, endeavoring. Yeah, I remember I talked about that a lot last time. So my, here's my point, though. So God sees all of us as one. Now, in eternity, eternity, you know, eternity is a long time. Now, you may live to be 120, but that ain't nothing compared to eternity. So you want to make sure, if you're going to spend the most of your time in eternity, you might want to make decisions that, that's, that that conducive it for eternity living. Yeah. Yeah. See, the longer term thinking you make, the better short term decisions you, you make. You think, man, how is this going to affect me 10 years from now? How is this going to affect my, my family? How is this going to affect my grandchildren? And then you make better short term decisions. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, verse 13, please. So we're, we're, we're one in the spirit now, right? But here's the goal, verse 13. The goal is till we all come to the unity of the faith. Now how are we going to come to the unity of the faith? By endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So the destination or the goal is the unity of the faith. What does all that mean? I explained it last time, but in a nutshell, um, it means that at some point we're going to all believe the same thing at some point. Yeah, amen. But, but right now point is, and this is amazing, but we have to agree on the, on the major essential things now. Like Jesus is the son of God, born of a virgin, uh, died on the third day, uh, no, he died and was raised from the dead uh, for the remission of our sins. We have to believe that to get into the family of God. We have to believe that. That's, that's, that's non-negotiable. We have to believe that. Now, what we don't have to believe, we can believe what we want to believe, or people have different beliefs, like, okay, when is he coming again? Well, some people, well, or when, when am I going to see him? When is he coming again? Well, the post-tribulation, uh, 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 pre-tribulation, all that. Listen, listen. I don't care. All I know is he's coming, and I'm going to be ready. That, that's, all you need to be, that's all you need to be concerned about is he is coming, right? Don't, don't be trying to stay right on the edge. So is he coming? Is he going to come before? Uh, no, you just stay ready and you don't have to worry about that. So no, that's what I mean by non-essential. But you believe he, you, you know he's coming. <laughs> okay. And then all the other stuff, we just, we just walk in love toward each other. Do you believe that? Okay, you don't believe I don't have to wear pants? Or, uh, well, you know, women don't wear pants. And, uh, okay, whatever. Or, 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 there's people, I don't believe miracles for the day. Okay. I ain't gonna fuck with you. You believe what you want to believe. I don't believe God heals people. Okay. 
Don't worry. You won't be bothered with it. Don't worry about it. I don't believe God will prosper you. Okay. You don't have to believe that. That is not going to impact your salvation. So we stay in love. I ain't going to talk about you. Don't you talk about me. And when you hitchhiking, I'm going to stick my head out the window. I thought you didn't believe. <laughs> that's not, that's, that wasn't good. But anyway, so, so I want to break it to you. Okay, but here, here's the point. And, and I, I'm kind of going to belabor it from last week. The major thing that disrupts our unity. The major thing that disrupts our unity, that shuts it down, is how, and Paul spent a lot of time talking about it, how we treat one another. Amen. How Christian people treat one another. We talk, okay, now we're not talking about the world now. We're talking about Christian, those of us who, 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 who are Christians. So, y'all ready? Okay, let's go back into it. Um, look at Ephesians 4. Look at verse 32 if you, you're following me in your Bible. Our treatment of one another is critical. But he says here in verse 32, be kind to one another. And what else? Tenderhearted. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Look at this. Watch this. Are you ready for this? Even as God in Christ forgave you. Are you serious? Okay, now let's put this with verse 2 that we read a little earlier. Because these are the two scriptures that's going to drive our talk. With all lowliness and gentleness. With long suffering. Bearing with one another. In love. Now if we go back a little further. Like the first verse. He said this is what we're called to. We're called to. We're called to be forgiving. As God forgave us. Man, tenderhearted, gentle, long some pa patient with people, bearing with one another, in love. So he's saying, okay, if I was talking, no matter what you do that you should not have done, and no matter what you should have done that you did not do to me, I got to forgive you. Yeah, amen. Okay. No, no. no matter how much you hurt me, no matter how disappointed you made me, according to this, I got to forgive you. Amen. I got to let it go. Yeah. I got to bury it and not dig it up again. <laughs> Are we reading from the same Bible? Yes, sir. Why? Because I'm called to keep the unity of the Spirit. That's why I say endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit. Because if she does something to you, you're going to get harder than fish grease. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and here's the point. Your emotion takes over. See, a lot of us, we, we live in our feeling and we, we, we let our feeling dominate us and then we got to go, oop. You know what that means? Man, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he said, and Paul said, no, endeavor. You're going to get mad. You're going to get pissed off. I mean, disappointed. <laughs> you're going to hurt. You're going to, listen, somebody going to hurt you and you're going to want to hurt them back. That's how it goes. But, but I have to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. I got to let it go. People are going to mess up. People are going to do some crazy stuff. Some people that's close to you, people that love you, people that don't love you. They, somebody going to mess up. But you, wow. How many of y'all think that's impossible? Nobody? Oh, I can just skip this section then. And just go down to the next. <laughs> OK, 
okay, I think it's impossible. You do? I do. How many of y'all not gonna play no matter what I say? <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. You can't do that. I can't do that. That's why Jesus said, I'm gonna send you the helper. Now, there's some people, like, I don't believe in that being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Okay, I'm fine. I ain't gonna argue with you. You're gonna get to heaven quicker than me. <laughs> Believing like that. Okay, that's another joke, too. Okay, I'm trying to keep it light for now. But um, that's why Jesus said, I'm gonna send you a helper, and he's gonna be with you forever. He's gonna dwell with you. He's not just gonna come on vacation. And he's going to assist you, he's going to coach you, he's going to advise you, he's going to strengthen you, he's going to show you which way to go. He's going to show you how to lift this thing up. He's going to strengthen you, but you got but you got you got to let him. Yes, amen. You can't do this. Living a Christian life is not it's not easy. It's impossible. Yes. Without without him. Amen. It's impossible. And so he said so Paul spent a lot of time in this letter, in the Corinthian letter, and he said, Paul said, I mean, see, anyway, oh, I got so much. But if I take a rabbit trail, I, I won't get back in time. But he, he, he said, endeavor to do this. You do this. Now, go to Romans chapter 12. Let Ephesians go. I mean, you know, keeping peace is hard work. Okay, 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 well, here we go. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. If it is what? Okay, I want everybody, is it on the screen? Okay, I want everybody, when I get to the P word up there on the scripture, I want you to say it out loud. If it is possible. Now you know why Paul said that? You wanna know why Paul said that? Cause it ain't possible with everybody. Oh, thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. I, that's what I'm talking about right there. I, I'm with you on this one. I, I woke up now. Because <laughs> he said, if it is possible, because but everybody, everybody ain't receiving you. It's not possible. Everybody ain't trying to be in peace with you. It's not possible for everybody. But he said, you. He said, if it's possible, if it is possible, as much as it depends on who? You. So, so it doesn't matter what other people do. What other people do does not determine what you do. If it is, if it's possible, as much as depends on you. In other words, live peace with all men. You pursue peace. Yes. I don't care if they don't. If they don't want it, fine. But you, you take the initiative to 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 release peace. Yeah. You don't sit there and like, okay, if they don't want it, God dog it. I hope they burn in at the fire at the barbecue. But <laughs> but if it is possible some people like don't you get in my faith don't call me I don't if I don't ever see you again and you're like okay I just I it ain't possible right here y'all get that <laughs> so you determine that though you in control you're in control so so I'm not it, it doesn't matter what they do it's what I do and you can decide to live a stress-free life, man. Amen. Stress-free, bitter, bitterness-free. You can decide. You can decide. You can decide. And again, we can only do this by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hallelujah. I was thinking about this this, this morning, how, um, you know, we made a decision a long time ago that we, we're, not, we're not arguing no more. We don't, we don't do that. But, um, you know, one thing my wife knows about me, one of my repetitions, re repetitions, what's that called? Repetitions is I let stuff go quick. I let stuff go quick. I'm gone. We'll talk about it, then I'm done. I'm done. I don't, I don't, uh -uh. 
I ain't living like that, and it's amazing. I ain't been sick, and I don't know. I can't even. I can't remember the last time I've been sick. See, I'm, I'm gonna talk about this, but but a lot of times people think. Uh, see, there's a lot of sickness that's spiritual. Had nothing to do with with your body breaking. Well, it, it will break your body down, but a lot of stuff is spiritual. I'll show you this. But 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 he said, if it's possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. I've had an opportunity to be offended a lot of times, almost regularly, almost daily, just like you. I've had people do stuff to us, to me personally, to my family, just like they've done stuff to you. I had people lie and, and, and bear false witness against me to get an advantage, just like they have to you. I have stuff, people do stuff to my kids, just like they've done to your kids. Wow. I've had people steal from me. I've had... <laughs> I told you you're going to get a little messy. I've had, I've had people I paid employees steal from me. I had to shut down a business because folks started stealing. And then, uh, eh. People I trusted. You were paying a mortgage because of me. And you gonna steal from me? I almost went, I almost went ethnic on them. <laughs> I don't know. I probably shouldn't have said that, <laughs> but I did. No, I'm, I'm just trying to let y'all know. I know y'all, y'all, y'all never heard me get up here complaining. And you know, and you keep my eyes. Oh, y'all don't know what happened this week. People, doc, I trusted. Had them lie, straight up lie. I've had people steal stuff and take it to the porch. <laughs> In the holy house of God, man. And I gotta stay, I gotta stay prayed up. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, but I chose, I got hotter than fish grease, too. But at some point you gotta you gotta like, okay, I gotta forgive them. You listen, you may not want it. I'm forgiving you. I don't care what you do, what you say, you getting some forgiveness. Well, I don't want forg- I don't care if you don't want it. I'm forgiving you. Why? Because this is, ain't even about you. On, right. This ain't even about you. The, uh, forgiveness is all about the person yeah. that, that's got the, that's harder than fish grease. Yeah. yeah. And so, so, so why? Because I want God. See, all that stuff to happen, if I stay in the place where I'm supposed to be in the spirit of, the spirit of unity, then everything that what folk did, God will bring it all back. Yeah. Yeah. And then some. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta endeavor. What you gotta do? Endeavor. You gotta work at it. At night, when you stand up and you, you can think about people you can call and like, hey man, I, I need a favor. <laughs> and people, you, you just make up in your mind that you gotta wanna call. You, 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 this, you know, you're trying to sleep. You're just trying to get some sleep, and then that stuff pops in your head. Yeah. Yeah. And now you got some heart. I'm sorry, I said that. And now, and now you have some hardship <laughs> because of something somebody else did. And you got to forgive them. Yeah. You got to let it go. Another love TKO. <laughs> <laughs> Old folks laughed at that one. The young ones don't know what that means. But, but you got to let it go, man. You know, I've had, I've had people do stuff to my wife, and and, and see, I, I, you know, I'm like, okay, I can handle it, but don't be messing with my girl. Amen. I will. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Ah! <laughs> okay, see, I told y'all I was gonna get. Okay, I, you know, don't mess with my wife. That girl been too good to me. I will, I won't, I won't. You know, some people I take a bullet. No, I will release a bullet for her. <laughs> I will release one. <laughs> Father God, in the name of the Lord. 
It'll be a holy bullet. <laughs> okay, come on. Yeah. Now that's my son here, but but I um I hid. We hid a lot of the downside of ministry. Cause I didn't want him. I I, I talked to even some of y'all. Y'all like, man, I hate. I hated my daddy's church. I hated the people. Cause you know people see, and so they saw things that they like. Oh well. Anyway, we had a conversation the other day, and uh, but we hid a lot of stuff. He thought everybody in church was wonderful. <laughs> he thought church was like heavens, like this. Yeah, he, he, he thought everybody was cool. And so the other day we was having a conversation, and he said, Dad, I remember the first time because he he ran into this person. Father God. Anyway, and he said, uh, he said, I remember the first time I saw saw people outside of church. How they act. You know, he he grown man now. And he said, I thought I thought everybody was and he thought everybody loved me. He said, like, I'm sure people ain't gonna talk about you, Dad. He thought everybody loved his mama. He thought everybody loved the lighthouse. He thought everybody loved everybody. <laughs> I didn't want him poison. The people are people. You got his share now. <laughs> it was all about y'all. <laughs> anyway, okay, let me stop. But um, I am not, it's just me. And I know sometimes I look like a fool, but I refuse to live in strife with anybody. Amen. There's a lot of stuff I could say. I just let it go. I just, I just, I just don't even address it verbally, out loud, out of my mouth. There's a lot of stuff I can say. But I'm like, and we had one preacher, then that preacher stole all my stuff. Yeah. I mean, you don't even want to know no more. I don't even want to talk about it no more. And so, Pastor, how do you stay, how do you stay grounded? Now, I didn't say I didn't like, like miss it sometimes. But I'm 62 now, so a lot of stuff you, you realize, man, that wasn't even. <laughs> but this is so important to me that I, I don't care. I detest division. Sometimes, you know, we have to talk to couples and, you know, people, people bring us into their lives. And I'm sitting there, you know, I can fix, I, I can fix this in five minutes. I could, I, you know, you, you, you know you can. I already know what the problem is. If you, if you be quiet long enough, we can tell you what the problem is. And it ain't deep, you don't need to go to Dr. Phil. <laughs> okay, how we doing, we good? Okay, go to Galatians chapter five. I want God involved in every area of my life, so you know there's something greater than my feelings, how I feel about something. And then besides that, turn to Galatians 5. Unforgiveness is, is, is a sin against God. Because he told you to forgive. Who, who do I, he, and he said, as I forgave you. He said, I didn't ask a bunch of questions. I just forgave you. And so again, forgiveness, I, I'm, you know, if you can just understand, forgiveness is more for you than it is for them. I'll never forget the illustration, I think it was Oral Roberts said, God told him, to be to unforgiveness, unforgiveness is like you drinking poison, hoping somebody else dies from it. Wow. Meaning it affects you. Let it go. Amen. Galatians chapter five. Okay. Oh Lord. Okay. Now Paul warned the church about this kind of stuff over and over and over treatment to one another now look at verse 13 let's begin reading there he said for you brethren have been called to liberty only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh but through love serve one another in other words don't get in the flesh with one another that flesh means your natural uh, uh, feelings and all of that verse 14 for all the laws fulfilled in one word even this that you should love your neighbor as yourself but if you bite, 
That means wound their souls. I look these words up. I'm like, like you talking about Mike Tyson bite? Oh, what kind of, <laughs> what kind of bite? <laughs> what? Is that wrong? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I just want to be clear. Anyway, he said, if you bite, that means to wound people's soul that, that you, you intentionally do things and say things, I'm gonna hurt him at a heart level, at a, a deep level. If you, see, look, 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 he talking to the church folks. If you bite and devour. Now, I thought about First Peter, he said the, the devil goes around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? But he talking to the church folks about devouring. Okay. Let's talk about it. And devouring one another, beware, watch it, lest you be consumed by who? One My God! If we hadn't read this, we'd have thought he's talking to the people uh, uh, out in Afghanistan or something. Yeah. Or, 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 or demonic people. He's talking to the church. Wow, so he's saying in the church, people bite. Destroy, devour, and consume, just, just consume, destroy, completely gone. Wow. One another. He said, beware. That's how you destroy unity. Yeah. You have no regard for somebody. Is there people in, in now again, that's why I said earlier, we're talking about the church. We're not talking about the, the world going to do the world. But we came out of the world. Amen. Watch this. See, the nature of the flesh, the nature of the flesh. That's why he said, renew your mind um, uh, 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 so you can prove what is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. That's why he said, present your body, the flesh, as a living sacrifice. Why? Because if you know, the natural, the nature of the flesh is to consume, is to hurt, is to take advantage of, is to turn on people. Yeah. How many of y'all ever had somebody turn on you? Yeah, yeah, it's not a pleasant thing. But he said, that's the natural nature of the flesh. And people were coming to the church, hallelujah, on Sunday. Oh, man. But there'll be devouring, there'll be uh, 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 biting and consuming and, and just tearing up, exploiting, uh, uh, all of that. The saints of God. Wow. That's why he said, endeavor to keep. Because your flesh... Put your flesh in control. Amen. <sighs> Satan can't stop us because we got power over him. Right? Yeah. But we can stop us. Oh, How we treat one another, how we, how we bite and how we dog out and yeah. talk about it. And I was thinking, I was doing praise and worship, the Lord gave me a scripture. He said, if everybody would just mind their own business, <laughs> we wouldn't even, a lot of stuff, you know, you know, just stuff in the news, that, that, that the preacher in the news, because he, he, he talking about, you know, and people just fall, oh my God, I can't believe it. I said, well, I said, did he ask you for some money? I said, he ain't talking to you. He's talking to his partners. This ain't got nothing to do with you. So why are you getting all offended? And now you're putting your mouth on the man of God. And now you 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 biting and devouring. And, and now I'm gonna show you in a minute. I'm show you in a minute. You opening yourself up to some stuff you have no remedy for. Amen. Stay out of folk business. Now, that he on national TV, but stay out of his business. Stay out of her business. Wow. Leave him alone. Amen. That ain't got nothing to do with you. Well, yes, it does. Because that's your brother? Is it your brother? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for my brother. That's how you do that? Okay, I, can't, I need to hurry. I want to hurry. I don't want to hurry, but it's a part I really want to get to. This is good, though. This is good? Okay, so y'all gonna y'all gonna be patient with me today? Yes. <sighs> okay. Uh, bow and bow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Satan can't stop us, but we can stop ourselves. We stop, destroy, 
by division and devouring ourselves. We self-destruct, self-sabotage yeah. our own self. Now, I'm not done, but I want to pause right here. We need to look at our lives. We need to look at our lives and say, am I running down people? We need to look at our lives and, and, and examine ourselves. It's like, oh, am I running down people? Am I running down people I don't even know? Am I running down people or lifting people up? Oh, what am I doing for my brothers and sisters in Christ? How is my presence or my word impacting them? Or how is my lack of word impacting them? The Bible says, don't withhold good from those when it's in your power to give it. An encouragement. We need to look at our lives and we need to check ourselves. Amen. What my conversations like? Hmm. What my conversations like at home when it's just the two of us? I don't ask about how these are here because you know we we all act we all got a got a persona persona sona. How you say it? I got it. Oh, we got it. Thank you, Brother Jim. <laughs> Brother Jim just flowed with me here. Like, Keep it moving, Pastor. <laughs> but no, we, no, we need, we need to check ourselves. What if, what if I thought about this? Actually, I was talking to a preacher friend of mine, and I was going through this mess. He said, oh, boy, that's going to be hot. I said, yeah, it's going to be hot. But my people can handle it. We need some hot in Alaska. <laughs> but I said, I said uh, no, he said, he said, he gave, he gave me an idea, so I gave him credit. Next time he gonna want cash, but I'm giving credit for it now. <laughs> what if we all had a, a screen on our heads of all the stuff we thought about? Oh, oh Lord! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What if we? What if our thoughts would come up on the screen? I mean, in church. You see somebody walk in, you oh Jesus, Lord, have mercy, Father God, what the hey? And that's all, all that all that scrolling across there. <laughs> and then the person all that, oh, you're so nasty. You're so nasty. <laughs> that would be a little too much. It's the truth. I'm a dude too. I mean, you know. And women, y'all do it. Y'all probably worse than we are. But anyway, my point is this. We need to look at our life. Am I, am I, do I have strife, gossip, slander? Am I tearing somebody down because, because they didn't respond to me a certain way? I mean, I, I'm not some of the person there, but I'm talking to somebody else about them. And then somebody else is feeding into it. Oh, we got to check ourselves. Amen. Check the conversation. We won't be on the phone long. And then, and then some of y'all, y'all get on social media and you get, you get involved in the conversation. People you don't even know. And them people got up, got up stuff ain't even true, but they want you to think a certain way, and that's the whole point. And then you fall into some child. Did you see this? Okay, okay. No, it's true. This is kingdom living. We can't just live any. I'm not saying I'm doing it all perfect, but we can't let, see. We want we want the hand of God moving, and that's supposed to be a, there's a synergy available, a power of unexplainable things. Oh, yes. And Paul dealt with this over and over and over. He said, "Listen, that's some stuff named among y'all. It ain't even it ain't even talked about out there in Mountain View." But y'all doing it here in the church. He said, dog. I'll pray for tongue. I'll pray in tongues about y'all. So that ought to make you be encouraged. Why? That kind of stuff was happening back then. This ain't new. It's human nature, same devil. But we got power over it. So we need to look at our lives, man, and see. Most churches, are, most churches are destroyed from within. It, it ain't the devil. It's, it's within. Boy, I sure could go there. But we're not going to talk about it. Most families are destroyed from within. You got a third voice in there now. 
It used to be just two. Yeah. You and her. Or her and you and you and him. Now there's a third voice. And if it ain't the Holy Ghost, it's trouble. Yeah. Yes. Don't let don't let other folk come into your no, that's your that's y'all. Leave and cleave. Yes, sir. Don't let other folk come in there. I don't care who they are. Okay. So we gotta we gotta get the heart right if we want to experience the supernatural promotion from God, the favor of God, all the stuff we know about. But where is it? All the stuff we know God promised. We thought He's the promise keeper. Where is it? When did it happen? When did you get that manifest? Where is it? I don't want to keep, keep reading the promises. I don't want to keep reading the promises. I want to see some manifestation. And I don't just want to see it for me and Deb. And my, I want to see it. I want to see it. I want, I want, I want to be. When it passed, I, need, I need to testify today. What well, we got to do? Praise and worship. I know we got to praise and worship. Well, we're going to praise and worship over this. I got to testify. Give me the mic. Where the mic? That ought to happen every Sunday. And then there, there ought to be something, something so powerful that when you go to work or whatever you do, whatever your business, folks are like, girl, <laughs> okay, all right, it's Monday. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Because this is not normal. You used to come in here dragging with, with a big old cup of coffee. What's going on? <laughs> what happened? Well, child, I, I was hoping you asked. Let me tell you what God did. Let me tell you what turned around in my house this weekend. Right. Yeah. You get all dramatic with it. Yeah. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened? Man, God told me, God told me, you know, you know, you know, me and old boy, we ain't been getting along. We ain't had, you know, we ain't been getting along. And so God told me, I went to church, my pastor preached, right? Okay. My pastor preached about unity. And he said, there's a commanded blessing on unity. So I went to my old boy, old boy, I told him, I said, listen, I ain't been acting right. <laughs> I've been all up in my feelings and I hadn't been considering you. And every time you try to talk, I just cut you off. I just cut you off, that's what I do. I just cut you off. But today, here's what I want you to do, bro. I want you to sit down and get you a legal sized piece of paper. And I want you to write out everything you've been wanting to say to me for the last six months. And I know you haven't said it because you know I be start throwing stuff. But I want you to write it down. I want you to write it down and I'm gonna sit here and let you explain everything. Wow. However long we need to sit. What's wrong with you? I went and heard Pastor Ken. And Pastor Ken said, I need to humble myself. Yeah. I've been trying to wear the slacks around this mug. And I've been trying to control you. But I, it's a new day, bro. It's a new day. I repented. You did. You repented. I repented. It's a new day. I know, I know, it, feel, I know it feels strange right now. It feels strange to me. But, I, but Pastor said feelings ain't got nothing to do with this. Yeah. So here, you do that. And I tell you what. I'm gonna go in here and fry you some potatoes like your mama used to do it. <laughs> and uh, I'll be back. <laughs> here and there, flipping pages. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> yeah. See, see, I'm not talking about something that's gonna take you six months to correct. You can correct this in 30 minutes with the Holy Ghost, and then you grab his hand, and say, we're gonna take communion right now. Okay. We're gonna take communion right now, bro. And I wanna seal this. And then, you know, we can. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> we can go celebrate our covenant. <laughs> Married people know what that means. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, no. Okay, can I get a solid from y'all today? Yes. 
How many of y'all know what a solid is? That's a favor. Like some more time. Because I can't sit on this till next week. I'll be, I be calling y'all texting. I can only text 160 characters. I'll be texting you all night. Y'all be getting texts all night for a few So, <laughs> so you got to get your heart right if you're going to experience God's goodness. Now, it's amazing to me. Some people will repent for drinking too much. Oh, I had too much to drink. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm repent. But they won't repent for discord, strife, division, for all that, all of that cause. They won't repent yeah. from that. Okay, listen to this carefully, because I can get, I can, I can be mud by this evening. Listen to this carefully. Carefully. How many of y'all were here last week? Okay, maybe I should have asked the other question. Okay. So y'all remember how I did the, uh, no, nobody gave me a cigarette, I wanted to light up a cigarette. And nobody, you know we got some smokers in here, they're like, I ain't smoking. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to prove a point. And I had so much resistance on that one, I just, you know, shut it down. But today, I had all week to pray about this one. No, it's not here. I want you to think about this. I need you to think, though. Because Paul talking about this stuff is crazy. How we, how we think. That, and remember, I talked about how we talk about things that grieve the Holy Spirit who is the engineer of the unity. And we, don't, we take it lightly how we treat one another. How many you know adultery, having relationships outside of marriage is not healthy? Amen. It's not wrong. I mean, it's not right. Amen. See, whew. <laughs> Yeah, I was over there, man. And pastor said, ain't nothing wrong with adultery. <laughs> See, y'all know I had a slip of the baton every now and then. So that's not what I said. But it's, it's wrong. Terrible. And we normally, we label people like that. Ah! Oh, did you hear about that? Did you? Yeah, yeah I saw him Simon. You did, yeah. I knew, I knew something was going on. <laughs> you know how y'all do. But what about the people who cause strife, contention, division? What about those people? What's worse? This got to be a trick question right here. What's worse? Talk to me. Huh? It's the same? Are you, come on, no, come on, don't be pulling my leg. It's the same. Well, how come we don't talk about that? How come we don't talk about it then? Why do people always bring up, well, you know, these folks having sex in the church. And, okay, how, how, come, how come you rarely hear, yeah, well, them folks just have so much contention and strife. She always running her mouth and gossiping. Ugh. Hmm. How come we don't talk about that? Wow, that's good, though. Huh? Because we be talking about ourselves? Oh, okay. All right, Lieutenant. You Lieutenant, you're captain now. You a major, my bad. Oh, I demoted you, huh? Okay, cause you said you said because we we're doing it ourselves, and unfortunately, gossip, tail bearing, all of that's become normal, and we're like ah, oh. and we'll sit down and talk for hours with that. Okay, now this is why I need y'all to work with me. Okay. And let me look in y'all eyes. <laughs> and don't be recording. Well, it's recorded. Right? And this is the way I think. I be having too much time on my hands. But no, I be I, I was studying. I said, okay. Now y'all said it was the same. 
right? So the average adulterer, the average adulterer, don't do it five, six times a day. <laughs> Same day. Why y'all laughing? Right? Huh? Some of them were passed out. Oh, oh, so. Okay. But no, really, by and large, the average person doesn't do it five, six times a day, every day. But a person, a gossiper, a talebearer, a slanderer, would talk, they would do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. <laughs> They do it all day long. And then some people, some of y'all will sit there and listen to it. But then you're going to talk about the one who made a mistake. And y'all just told me it's the same. Well, why you put up with that? And why, and why are you participating? I'm not condoning, adult, but I'm not condoning gossiping either. Shut up. Yeah. See, and this is what this is what destroying this is destroying families, it's destroying churches, it's destroying communities. Yeah. And they're trying to destroy and they they they, they just do President Trump like a punching bag. <sighs> Was that a good illustration? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But y'all, y'all help me though. It's, it's the same. Okay. So why are you okay with the other one? And I'm talking, that's why I remember I told you at the beginning, listen for yourself. Amen. And judge us. Why are you, why are you and, and, and be strong enough to cut people. Out. Look, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about that. Yeah. And you bring it, okay, you know what? This friendship is about to be terminated. Oh, okay, okay, we just, okay, okay. I have my time. Okay, okay, we just won't talk. I don't want to lose friendship over that. I said, well, I wouldn't either. But okay. So you just don't bring that up. We just don't talk about it. We work around it. Yeah, amen. I ain't getting in strife by nobody. I'm not opening the door to a devil. I work too hard. Oh, yes. I mean, it's hard enough just living right, my yeah, Lord. Man. I ain't giving the devil, no. And I ain't doing it all perfect. But, but I ain't giving the devil no straight shot. Okay, I want to show you something. Okay, thank you. Ooh, y'all so awesome. Um, um, uh, okay, let me see. Maybe I want to... Um, hold on. No, this is all good. Go to Proverbs 6, or, or look on the screen. If, 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 take good note, uh, get the tape, get the DVD, get the CD, get the app, and, and listen to all this over. And this is stuff, you need to listen to it again. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to, we need, I told you last week, we need to recoil when folks start talking about people. Ah! Oh, no! Oh, please! What's the matter? Oh, I don't want that on me. Please stop. I don't want to catch that. Okay. In Proverbs 6, 12, it says, verse 12 says, A worthless person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. He winks with his eyes. He shuffles his feet. He points with his fingers. Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually. He sows what? Discord. Now watch this. 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 Verse 15. Therefore his calamity shall come suddenly. Suddenly he shall be broken without remedy. There's no treatment for that. That's why I said, this, that's some stuff. See, see, sin has consequences. God is merciful. I said, God is what? Merciful. But sin has consequences. It's not God punishing you. Sin, that's opened the door to sin has consequences. Amen. 
And so he's saying there's no remedy for the person that sold discord. Until they, they can repent, they need to repent. Repent means change. He said there's no remedy for that. But I opened the door to give the devil a straight shot into my life that nothing, there's no treatment to fix that. Okay, um, Proverbs 14.30 in the Amplified, please. I'm, 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 I'm. Oh, Lord. Look at this. A calm and disturbed, undisturbed mind and heart are the life and health of the body. Did you see that? Yes. A calm and undisturbed mind and heart are the life and health of the body, but envy, jealousy, and wrath are like rottenness of the bones. He didn't say no chemical imbalance or lack of uh, 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 vitamin K and D. He said envy, jealousy, and wrath is like rottenness of the bones. There's some stuff that envy, jealousy, wrath, uh, 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 running down people brings into our bodies. Not even the devil. Okay. Now, go to... Uh, Okay, you still in Proverbs 6? Okay, look at verse 16. 16. I'm moving quickly now. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devised wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil. A false witness who speaks lies, one who sows discord among who? Brother. Among who? Brother. Again, he's not even talking about the world. He's talking about misguided, confused Christians. Wow. Okay, I gotta keep moving. Um, I don't think I need to do that one. Yes, I do. Proverbs 26. Woo! How we doing? Awesome. Okay, this is, I'm gonna use this passage then the next passage and we're done. Proverbs 26, where there is no wood, the fire goes out. Well, obviously. <laughs> but watch this, he's drawing a contrast. And where there's no tail bearer, strife cease. So he said, a person that's running his mouth, strife field, tail bearer, he said, remove that person, strife is over. Sometimes it's just some people in our life. We don't like, okay, Saranara, sa Saranara. You Japanese, is that how you say it? Is that close? That's close. It's close, okay, that's my Japanese speaker over there. Okay, she said, she said close. She having mercy on pastor. But anyway, uh, see ya. Bye-bye. Pastor, you gonna call me back? No. You gonna come see me? No. Can I come over? No. Can we go to lunch? No. Can I come to church? Yeah, you come on and sit out there with everybody else. But I'm not getting close contact with you. Cause see, 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 my life just got some peace. Why? Remove it ain't it ain't hard. You don't even need it. He didn't say pray. Pray, Lord. Can you talk to him and tell him to, to close their mouth? Shut up. God said, no, tell him to. Shut up and leave. I mean, tell them. <laughs> just relocate them out of your life. Just tell them, hey, now you you talk about folk too much. So yeah. we're gonna I'm gonna terminate this Amen. relationship. I love you. I need some peace. Some some of you don't have peace just because of other people in your life. It ain't even you. Amen. How many? Of you? Uh, never mind. <laughs> Okay, look at it. Let's, let's finish it. Verse 21. As charcoal is to burning coals, uh-huh, and wood to fire, uh-huh, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. You take the, take the wood out, the fire will go down. Don't put no more coal on it, it'll burn out. Remove a contentious, for always contentious being combative, argumentative, antagonistic, always opposing, always got something to counter. He said, remove them and the strife will stop. Amen. Okay, now let's drop down to, drop down to, drop down to. Uh, 
Oh, man. Okay, drop down to 24. Verse 24. He who hates disguises it with his lips, my Lord. You can, how many of y'all had a hater in your life? You found out later they were a hater, but they, when they were with you, hey, baby, how you doing? You good? Oh, appreciate you so much. Enjoyed you last week. <laughs> Only to find out they were disguising their hate with their words. How many of y'all hate fake, I mean, don't, uh, how many of you don't like fake people? Oh. Okay. Okay, look at this one. Verse 26, though his hatred is covered up by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. Everybody gonna find out. But okay, here's the part I want you to see. Verse 27, whoever digs a pit will fall into it. And he who rolls a stone will have it rolled back on him. You know what I thought about when I read that? One of my favorite cartoons was Road Runner. Beep beep, beep beep. And Wally Coyote was always chasing Road Runner. And he be beep, beep, and he be gone. And then Wally Coyote be setting up these traps. And he get a he get a big old stone, and he get the little little stick to to uh, to, to leverage it. And he set, and he and he and soon as he soon as he turned around, that ro that stone would come on down and, and and just crush him. That's the way people that run their mouth putting folk down. You know, I, I thought I'd say this last week. I mean, last week. A few minutes ago, earlier in the sermon, I have seen people. This is this is no lie, no exaggeration. I have seen pe some of the people not even on this earth anymore. I have seen people that struck right in, before my eyes, and some of them were people that I trusted, but I didn't know they were covering up the hate with their mouth. I got to get better. That's selecting my friends. <laughs> Suzanne is my investigative uh, reporter. She normally helps me out. <laughs> yeah. So Roadrunner, yeah, okay, Roadrunner. So again, he said, whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone will have it rolled back on him. So you try to hurt somebody, it's coming back on you. There are consequences to sin in violating God's word. So, okay, let's say, let's say I have a problem with you. In Matthew 20, uh, Matthew 5, that's our last scripture and that's gonna be my offering scripture, but it's in my message, but I'm just using it for my offering scripture. But let's say I have a problem with you. What do I do? Huh? Tell them. Okay. I don't put it on Facebook and tell them. Tell the people out there so I can get some likes. Yeah, I got one or two. I know what you're talking about. No, I, that's not, I, I, maybe I didn't ask the right question. I mean, I, I, that's, that's the right question. But his, his way, his way, one, his way friendly does it. If I have a problem with you, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, we need to fix this. We need to fix this. I don't need to go into no long, no, no. no. We got a problem. We need to fix this. That's it. What's the subject matter of my statement? Huh? Huh? We fix. Okay, grammatically, that may not be correct, but that's, I'm doing this. I got the microphone right now, okay? The emphasis is fix. We need to fix this. And I ain't talking about next week. We're gonna fix this, we're gonna talk about this today. And, and when we talk about it, what are we gonna do? Fix it. We're not just going to talk about it. We're going to fix it. I can't wait till we get to this family series because a lot of times, a lot of things, see, if it's not working at home, you can't export it. And, and a lot of things are tied, especially once you get married, are tied 
to your marriage and to your home, how stuff is running up in there. Amen. First, that distinguishes what goes out there. So, Mark, Matthew chapter 5, last scripture for real. And then we're going to pray, receive our offering, and, and then we're going to repent. Everybody going to repent. We all going to repent. Everybody up in here going to repent. And then we have some ushers. They have a roll of duct tape that they're going to, everybody going to walk up to the door. <laughs> you know what, though? No, we're not going to do it there. No, we're going to put it. We're going to put it on the heart. That's where it's got to start. You have heard that it's been said of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry, angry with his brother without a cause shall, not, shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever says to his, to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, we're about to receive an offering in a minute. And there remember that your brother has something against you. And there remember that your brother has something against you. Not that you have something against your brother, but that you, you remember your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother. And then come and offer your gift. Wow. So if I find out that you have something against me, what am I supposed to do? Okay, let me help you with the heart. I thought y'all were with me, but I'm supposed to come to you. Not tell everybody else that I, I think Suzanne is upset with me. I'm in error now. This ain't their business. This is my business. If I think Suzanne is upset with me, I go to Suzanne. Now, how many people violate the order of God? They want to tell everybody else. He said, don't tell everybody else. You, if you think or know they have something against you, go to them and be done with it. Amen. And same, same back, if you, have, if you think I have, what am I trying to say? If you think I have something against you, don't go to Jim. Don't go to Deb. Come to Ken. That's the order of God. It's error to take what you think somebody else is saying or doing or feeling. To, to, it's error. It's what? Error. To go somewhere. God said, no. The way I set it up, you go to them. That's between y'all. Because, see, if you go to somebody else, now you're sowing. Because, because they only got your side. And your side is slanted. Yes. In your favor. Yes. And so now you got somebody offended with you and don't even know what's going on. Yes. And now they're out of order. Jesus. Man, Man. we got to do the word. Because, you know, that's, that's, that's okay. So, 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 <laughs> so here Jesus is stressing the need to do all we can to end strife. Yeah. The consequences of having strife in your heart is so severe. He said, don't offer a sacrifice to God if your brother is upset with you. Amen. In other words, well, I'm, you know, we throw money at everything. So we have to, if I just keep throwing money at it, God's okay with me. No, that don't work with God. God said, you can give all you want, but it's not going to work for you. And so a lot of times people are giving, 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 and they feel good about their giving, but they won't go across the hall and make right with their brother. And so that is hindering the increase that God wants to bring into your life. Amen. So Jesus said, take the initiative. First reconcile and then come off of your gift. You take the initiative in reconciliation. Don't let somebody else do it. In Matthew 18, he talks about if you don't forgive, you will be turned over to tormentors. So we got to get this right. Why? Why are you talking about this with unity? Because this is where it starts at a heart level. And 
and with the people that God, there's something on you that God put on you that, that, that God wants to help me and help the people around me. But we cannot do it. We cannot do it. Violating his word. I want to pray. And I want to lead us in a prayer of repentance. Now, if you don't need it, you can, you can go sit in the car or uh, whatever you want to do. But um, that's why I'll let you know ahead of time. We're going to repent. And I guarantee you, everybody in here. Now, I had the benefit of, of uh, God, Lord, I need to get better at this. I want to get better at this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We don't want to pass this on to our children. They think it's normal to be fussing and fighting. They listening through the walls and hearing stuff slam and hear us on the phone in the car talking about, talking to mama about what 